So we've drilled through the phenolic on our ShopSaver CNC router into the steel below so that we can tap that and thread it so that we can then fixture a little bit differently than just using the vacuum work holding. So I can show you how we did that. First, you kind of have to make, you know, make some type of drawing of your machine. They're all just slightly different. So the steel columns are kind of on a normal grid underneath, steel beams that is. You can kind of see them there. And there's not a huge sidewall of the steel, but it's plenty enough to tap in a quarter 20 thread, which is what we used. So you just kind of have to know where those are in advance and you can kind of see where they line up with these bolts that exist already up here. And so we kind of use those then to think about where we wanted to put additional tapped holes. So we've done through the whole table here, you can kind of see it goes all the way back. What that gets you then is you can have a little box full of tricks here. And these are all just quarter 20 bolts and thus while not dropping stuff down those like a socket we've done that before you can see here that we've got some kind of holes that we've used to index in other fixtures and things like that you can see down in there we've tapped through the steel and so you can thread into the table i'm gonna be able to see it from below but you can then bolt down something like your clamp we don't ever really cut exactly like this because we like to preserve this nice, expensive phenolic top. So we'd put some type of spoil board or this fixture plate we've made, which I'll show you now. So one of the keys to being able to repeat a setup is you need to put in some type of pins. So we use steel pins, you can just use acetyl ones, and then we drill out a slightly bigger hole in the phenolic. So then that aligns every time in the same spot. Got one there, one there. So I'll pick this up and show you how that goes on. Subscribe now and hit the bell so you don't miss our next video. So I've got the one side in over here partially, and then you're just gonna align this one wherever it went until it hits that hole. It should drop down as well. Now you know your fixture should be about as repeated as you're ever gonna get on a machine like this, honestly. So we'll take these quarter 20 like cabinet fasteners, throw them in the holes, get them started. And then we take a drill and clutch it down, maybe like somewhere like 10, just this little drill we use for everything. So you don't want to thread the, or strip these out down in the steel below where you're kind of screwed. We're going to take that out, put it in our torque wrench. We also used aluminum ones for a long time. So the torque wrench is smart. It's a three Newton meter. And that way you can't over torque it. You only can go so far and then it twists and releases on you. Especially considering we're tightening down this armor core, which is MDF with a little bit of plywood in between, you can really compress that too much and this keeps it nice and consistent. All right, so one cool thing about this fixture is it has quarter 20 T nuts embedded between the layers. So we just pocketed the backside when we flipped it over. These are just through holes and these bigger ones are 516 dowels, so we can create stops and be able to like set up something repeatedly. Just kind of our generic fixture that we use for any type of work holding we need that's not something like this jig back here that's specifically for a product. It uses the same methods of mounting to the table. I'll show you that in a second here. But they make our uh, Chemex rests. So we can put the second operation in there. All right, so same thing happens here. These are slightly smaller. I think these may be 316s goes up there and then you drop on your fixture all right same thing i've put that end on now i just lift up slide it over until the hole hits drop it down so this fixture is the same as then when we made it machine the backside first when you flip it over then you've got it in the perfect spot and it's never changed basically since the first time you set it up now we would just go through and do the same thing and Put in all of our screw downs. And the changeover between spoil board, which is over there in the corner, to this is probably about five minutes, honestly. Don't forget to cover your holes so you don't suck things down into your vacuum ports. Just little acetyl pieces we made. So one of the keys to this working well is you need to drill and bore the holes in the phenolic with the machine itself. That way you know you have it in your computer, your CAD or whatever CAM software you use. 
You can always come back to that, make new fixtures with those patterns and holes. And that's how we make something like this, where we know those holes and patterns already so that we can just drop those in, put the holes through, use the alignment pins, and it makes it quick to set up the next fixture. I don't recommend drilling and tapping into the steel with the machine itself. I would just machine through your top of your uh, bed. And once you get to the steel or a little bit above it, hand drill and then tap that by hand as well. But yeah, that's how we set up our table to use mechanical fixturing. We actually have a couple of product ideas coming along those lines. So if you figure this out, you'll likely be able to use some of our upcoming products. Hope that was helpful. Did you know Portland CNC has a dust boot and duct tower for CNC routers? These both fit shop saber machines and the dust boot works with a handful of other makers. The dust boot increases airflow by 89% over the stock boot and doesn't need to be docked, which saves about 20 seconds on each tool change. That adds up to cutting another two to three sheets each day. Check out those in the description below.